Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. In this video, we will be learning about the brachial plexus. Now what is plexus? Plexus is a network of nerves or vessels in the body. We have four plexuses in our body, mainly the cervical plexus, brachial plexus, lumbar plexus and the sacral plexus. In this video, we will be learning about the brachial plexus. Most nerves in the upper limb arise from the brachial plexus. It is formed by the union of the anterior primary rami of C5, C6, C7, C8 and T1 nerves. Rami means branches. So the brachial plexus is formed by the union of the anterior primary branches of the C5 to T1 nerves. Now let's look at the basic structure of the brachial plexus. It is basically like a tree. Now what does a tree have? Tree has roots, trunks and now we will further look into the details. Well in brachial plexus it has roots that is symbolized by R right here. Then it has trunks which is further divided into divisions that you can see as D and further into cords C then finally into branches. So well we have roots, trunk, divisions, cord and branches. Now let's look at the structure of the brachial plexus in detail. Now the roots include the C5, C6, C7, C8 and T1. They are the roots. Now the roots join together to form three trunks. The C5 and C6 together form the upper trunk right here. The C7 alone forms the middle trunk. The C8 and T1 together form the lower trunk. These are the three trunks, the upper, middle and the lower trunk. Now moving on, these trunks divide into anterior and posterior divisions. The upper trunk has anterior posterior division, middle has anterior posterior division as well as the lower which has anterior and posterior divisions. So these are the trunks, these are the divisions and now the divisions further form three cords, the lateral cord, medial cord and posterior cord. Now let us see how these cords are formed. The anterior division of the upper trunk as well as the anterior division of the middle trunk together form the lateral cord. The anterior division of the upper trunk as you can see and the anterior division of the middle trunk together form the lateral cord. Now the posterior division of the upper trunk right here. The posterior division of the middle trunk and the posterior division of the lower trunk, all these three posterior divisions together form the posterior cord. As you can see, the posterior division right here from the upper trunk, the posterior division from the middle trunk and the posterior division from the lower trunk form the posterior cord. Finally, the anterior division of the lower trunk alone forms the medial cord. So these are the three cords and this is how they are formed. Now finally moving on to the branches. From the lateral cord we have three branches L M L. An easy way to remember this is by using the mnemonic love me lots. So the L stands for the lateral pectoral nerve, M stands for the musculocutaneous nerve. This L stands for the lateral root of median nerve. So these are the three branches of the lateral cord. Moving on to the five branches of the medial cord, they are M, 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 U. 4 M's and 1 U. The first M stands for the medial pectoral nerve. Second M stands for the medial root of median nerve. Third stands for the medial cutaneous nerve of arm. 
and then the medial cutaneous nerve of forearm. Finally, U stands for the ulnar nerve. Now let us look at the branches of the posterior cord. They can be remembered by the word lunar. L stands for lower subscapular nerve, U stands for upper subscapular nerve, N stands for the nerve to the latissimus dorsi which is also called the thoracodorsal nerve, A stands for the axillary nerve and finally R stands for the radial nerve. Now let us look at the root values of these nerves. Firstly, the nerves from the lateral cord that is the LML have the root values C5, C6, C7 that is the lateral pectoral nerve, musculocutaneous nerve and the lateral root of the median nerve have the root value C5, C6, C7. Moving on to the nerves from the medial cord, they have the root values C8 and T1 except for one nerve that is the ulnar nerve. The ulnar nerve has a root value C7, C8, T1. Next, moving on to the nerves of the posterior cord, they have the root value C5, C6 except for two nerves that is the nerve to the latissimus dorsi and the radial nerve. The nerve to the latissimus dorsi has a root value C6, C7, C8 while the radial nerve has a root value C5, C6, C7, C8, T1. Now there are some branches that arise from the roots and the trunks. Let us look at them. Firstly, there is a nerve to serratus anterior. It arises from the C5, C6 and C7 roots. It is indicated by the orange color. Next, we will move on to the nerve to rhomboids. It arises from the C5 root. It is indicated by the blue color. Then we have the branches to longus coli and scalene muscles that arises from C5, C6, C7, C8 roots. It is indicated by the green color. Next, we look at the branches that arise from the upper trunk. They are the suprascapular nerve and the nerve to subclavius. The suprascapular nerve has a root value C5, C6 while the nerve to subclavius has the root value of C5, C6 as well. Now let us look at the main functions of these nerves. The lateral pectoral nerve supplies the pectoralis major and pectoralis minor muscles. The musculocutaneous nerve supplies BBC. Now what is BBC? It supplies the biceps, brachialis and coracobrachialis. The lateral root of median nerve joins with the medial root of median nerve and forms a median nerve. The medial pectoral nerve supplies the pectoralis major and pectoralis minor muscles just like the lateral pectoral nerve. Then the medial root of median nerve joins with the lateral root of median nerve just like this one. Next the medial cutaneous nerve of arm carries sensory impulses from a small area on the medial side of the arm. The medial cutaneous nerve of forearm carries sensory impulses from a large area on the medial side of the forearm. The ulnar nerve supplies one and a half muscles of the front of the forearm and 15 intrinsic muscles of the palm. Next, let us move on to the lower subscapular nerve. It supplies the teres major muscle. The upper subscapular nerve supplies the subscapularis muscle. The nerve to latissimus dorsi supplies the muscle of latissimus dorsi. That is, it supplies the latissimus dorsi. The axillary nerve supplies two major muscles that is the deltoid. The axillary nerve supplies two major muscles that is the deltoid and the teres minor. Finally, the radial nerve is the thickest branch and it supplies the triceps as well as the 12 muscles of the back of the forearm. Next, let us move on to the nerves that arise from the roots and the trunks. That is the nerve to serratus anterior which supplies the serratus anterior muscle. The nerve to the rhomboids which is also called the dorsal scapular nerve. It supplies the rhomboid minor and the rhomboid major. The branches to longus coli and scalene muscles. Then the suprascapular nerve which supplies the supraspinatus and infraspinatus. Then finally the nerve to subclavius 
that supplies the subclavius muscle. Now let's look at some clinical anatomy associated with the brachial plexus. First we have the herbs paralysis. The site of injury is at the herbs point. This is a point where six nerves meet. Now as I had described earlier, this point in the upper trunk is an area where six nerves meet. That is the C5, C6, the suprascapular nerve, the nerve to subclavius, the anterior division, the posterior division. So this is the herbs point. The cause of injury is the undue separation of head from shoulder, commonly encountered during birth injury, fall on shoulder and during anesthesia. These are the three main points. Then the nerve roots involved in herbs paralysis are C5 and C6. The muscles paralyzed are biceps, deltoid, brachialis and brachioradialis. Now let's look at the deformity and position of the limb. The arms hangs by the side, they are adducted and medially rotated. The forearm is extended and pronated. The deformity is known as policeman's tip hand or the waiter's or porter's tip hand. Now moving on to the disability. The abduction and lateral rotation of the arm is not possible in herbs paralysis. The flexion and supination of forearm as well is not possible. The biceps and supinator jerks are lost. And finally, the sensations are lost over a small area over the lower part of the deltoid. Moving on to the next clinical condition, we have Klumke's paralysis. The site of injury is in the lower trunk of the brachial plexus. The cause of the injury is the undue abduction of the arm as in clutching something with the hands after a fall from a height or sometimes in birth injury. The nerve roots involved are T1 and partly C8. The muscles paralyzed include the intrinsic muscles of the hand, the ulna flexors of the wrist and fingers. Then the deformity and position of the hand is that the claw hand due to unopposed action of long flexors and extensors of fingers. That is there is a claw hand which is due to the unopposed action of the long flexors and extensors of fingers. Next, in claw hand, there is hyperextension at the metacarpophalangeal joint and flexion at the IP joints. This is the hyperextension at the metacarpophalangeal. Metacarpal is here and phalanges are here. There is hyperextension right here and flexion of the IP joints. This is the interphalangeal joints, so there will be flexion. So it's almost like this position in the hand. There is claw hand. It looks like a claw. The disability is that the biceps and supinator jerks are lost, there is complete claw hand, there is presence of Horner syndrome and vasomotor changes. I hope you found this video helpful. To get updates on my latest videos, click on the subscribe button. To get notifications, tap on the bell icon. Thank you for watching.